All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial about the nucleus and nuclear decay. The lesson objectives are to explain how the nucleus is held together, to explain the difference between stable and unstable atoms, and to explain the similarities and differences between the common types of radiation. And this part of the, this slide right here is going to be um, just a basic uh, review of what the nucleus uh, entails, the symbols we use, what atomic number, mass number, and, and what an isotope is. Um, this should be reviewed, so if you actually need to read this or, or take notes on this, just hit pause because I'm not going to spend time explaining it. It's, um, it was listed in a previous video as well. All right, here we have an uh, example problem of nuclear notation involving carbon-14. Uh, to find the number of protons, you're going to look on the periodic table and you'll see that it's 6 uh, for its atomic number, so that means its number of protons is 6. And its mass number is 14, so you take away the 6 from the, the 14 and you would have 8 because the protons plus neutrons should equal the mass number of 14. All right, so this question right here, what holds the nucleus together? Uh, these are three scenarios that you guys probably learned about in physics, the opposites attract and likes jump back or likes repel, it says right here. Um, so the, the negative and positive right here are attracting each other while the positive and positive are repelling and the negative and negative are repelling. Now the reason I'm showing this picture is because this second one, where there's two positives, represent what's going on in the nucleus, where there's a bunch of protons or a bunch of positive charges. Technically speaking, they shouldn't be all held together in the nucleus because they're, they have a similar charge, they should be repelling. So, what holds the nucleus together? Okay, this picture shows electric repulsion of protons strains the nucleus. Okay, so they want to break apart. These arrows are showing this force that they want to break apart. So, obviously, if they're pushing out, something's pushing them back in and holding them in the nucleus. That force is called the strong nuclear force, and it holds the nucleus together. It holds protons the protons, protons the neutrons, and neutrons the neutrons. So it kind of holds all of those subatomic particles together in the nucleus. This is the strongest force that we know of in the universe. Um, that's why science has called it the strong nuclear force. Okay, does the nucleus always stay together, though? The answer would be no, not always. If there are not the right amount of neutrons and protons in a nucleus, it can become unstable. And this, ca this is caused by when the nuclear force um, fails. So if the nuclear force fails, it, it only has a certain amount of strength, um, eventually it will fail. When a nucleus is unstable, the atom becomes unstable because the nucleus is unstable, and it starts to break down. 92 protons is the max that can fit inside of a nucleus naturally. If you look at the periodic table, 92 protons represents the atomic number 92, which represents the element uranium. And this is why uranium is used uh, in, in nuclear power plants and nuclear bombs, because it has the max amount of protons that you can actually have naturally on Earth. Okay, so stable versus unstable atoms. Um, we looked at an example previously with chlorine, where there's chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, and we calculated its average atomic mass using this. But if you notice, chlorine 36 is missing, and there's a reason for this. It's unstable. Chlorine 35 is stable, chlorine 37 is stable, but chlorine 36 is not stable. And that's why it does not show up and is part of the percentage in the percent abundance of the isotopes. So you're only going to look at 35 and 37 because if there was chlorine 36, it would decay, it would break down because it's unstable. All right, stability and radioactivity. If an atom is unstable, it's considered radioactive. And what does it mean to be radioactive? It means it gives off radiation. And radiation can either be particles or it can be energy. It can form new nuclei. And here's a, here's a little flow chart for you where it says unstable atoms and they radiate either particles or energy. And as they give off this radiation, either the particles or energy, they become more and more stable. So eventually, uh, you know, atoms don't want to stay stable. Eventually they become stable. Um, but while they're becoming stable, they're releasing energy in the, in the form of part, or they're releasing energy or particles. All right, so what I did is I took this, the, the flow chart from the previous slide, this right here, and kind of just added to it down here. So particles, there's common types of particles include alpha particles and beta particles. And the common type of energy that's released from atoms is gamma. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over each one of these on an individual slide. So the first one, alpha particle decay. kind of looks like this little fish right here, like a fancy A. But as an alpha particle decay, um, when this happens, an unstable atom releases a helium-4 nuclei, which has a positive 2 charge. So basically it's just composed of 2 protons and 2 neutrons because the mass number is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4. 
Alpha particle decay only deals with heavy nuclei. So you have a mass number greater than 200 or you have an atomic number greater than 83. So right when it gets to be about lead, it becomes pretty stable. It's not going to go through alpha particle decay anymore. An example of this, um, uranium-238, uh, it decays into thorium-234, and then this HE-4, this helium-4 particle, this alpha particle. So basically what happens is uranium becomes, that's what this arrow means, it's, it's turning into, it's becoming, it's going through a nuclear reaction. So this is the before, uranium-238, and then it breaks down into thorium-234, plus an alpha particle. This HE is an alpha particle. And sometimes you'll see it written like this, where the thorium-234 is still there, but instead of writing HE4, they'll actually just write a little alpha symbol like that. Um, either way is right. Um, I find it a little bit easier to add these numbers just so you can check your work, but it's up to you. I, was, I would not mark it wrong if you actually wrote that in there. All right, next we have beta particle decay. So let's start over here in the flow chart. Beta particle decay. Unstable atom causes one of its neutrons to turn into a proton and also release a beta particle, which is really just an electron. Okay, this deals with atoms with high neutron to proton ratio. So we're going to look at this example right here for carbon, carbon-14. Okay, so one of the neutrons in carbon-14 is going to turn into a proton. So because of that, this carbon is going to add another proton. So that means it's actually going to bump up on the periodic table to nitrogen. So the number of protons right here, 6, becomes 7. The, the mass number stays the same. 14 and 14, because one of the neutrons just turned into a proton. It turned into a proton and released, as you see our flow chart, and released a beta particle, which is really just an electron. And that's what this electron is right here. This E stands for an electron. So it broke down, it added a proton, and then released an electron. And it, it flies off of this particle pretty much at the speed of light really fast. And this is um, beta particle decay, which is really just an electron again. Okay? And last but not least, we have gamma emission. With gamma emission, it's probably the simplest one to understand. Uh, basically, a nucleus is just releasing energy. It's still the same element. There's no mass change. So uh, if you have plutonium in our example right here, plutonium-240, um, it's still plutonium-240 over here, but it, in the meantime, it released a high-energy electromagnetic wave or gamma radiation, which is just pure energy. It doesn't have any mass, 